various metrics like sessions, average bandwidth, and volume of data sent and received on the LAN interface. Thank you for your participation in this session, and we hope you found the session informative. Welcome to Module 10 of the Versa Essentials series. In this module, we'll discuss Versa Network's device operations and administration capabilities. Versa Director is the single pane of glass used for provisioning software-defined services. It also provides a simple and intuitive approach towards operations and administration of SD-WAN network services. Versa provides a simple yet effective web interface to operate and manage today's networking services. There's no need to know CLI commands, and there's no more switching between different management portals for different vendors. Now you can click a button to get details of routes available, DHCP active leases, or BGP adjacencies, and other critical information about your SD-WAN environment. The user interface is agnostic to the form factor of the CPE devices deployed at a customer site. Whether it's a white box appliance, a big server in the data center, or a cloud-based VM, everything is managed from the same console. Versa monitoring capabilities include Layer 2 to Layer 7 information and provide information on networking attributes such as ARP table information, DHCP binding data, routing table information, dynamic routing protocol states, etc. Versa provides a structured approach for the operations of different networking services including security, SD-WAN, CGNAT, IPsec, etc. As a network administrator, you'll be in complete control of your software-defined branches with end-to-end real-time visibility of the network infrastructure supported with alarms and push notifications. Let's review some of the Versa Network's operations capabilities. Once logged in to the Versa Director dashboard, navigate to the Appliance level view. To view appliances, select the Administration tab, then select Appliances on the left menu. The successfully onboarded appliances are displayed. Select the appliance that you want to monitor. In our example, we'll select the Branch MT Shanghai device. This is where the device specific information is displayed. From the top menu bar, select the Monitor tab. The Monitor pane is where you perform real time monitoring of the appliance for various networking services. On the left menu, you can select the organization if the device is a multi tenant device. On the right, there are four main tabs, Summary, Services, System, and Tools. The Summary section provides a high-level view into various performance indicators for the device. Information such as traffic flow, overall bandwidth utilization, SD-WAN traffic steering policy-based bandwidth utilization, incidents, top applications based on transmit and receive statistics, and number of sessions is displayed. The Services pane provides access to various networking service performance and operations statistics. You can view active sessions on the appliance, validate SD-WAN or next generation firewall policy hit counts, look for routing table entries, DHCP active leases, ARP table information, and much more. The Systems tab gives you a clean and simple view of the system's health. Real-time system performance numbers like memory and CPU utilization, disk load, etc. are displayed. It displays information on the health of various Versa-specific services, licensing details, and much, much more. The Tools tab provides access to ping and traceroute tools to identify network layer reachability issues towards WAN or LAN interfaces. The administrator can also capture packets on the WAN or LAN interfaces with options to filter based on source or destined IP addresses, port numbers, protocols, and different combinations of these parameters. The portal lets the administrator download the captured file for analysis. There's no need to log into the appliance and remember long and complicated TCP dump commands and then transfer the file. All of this is simplified using the Tools section. Let's explore the Versa Monitor tab with some real traffic and look at some of the information that's available. A mobile phone is connected to the Versa infrastructure and it's in the Shanghai branch. Let's go to the Summary tab on the Shanghai branch to begin. The first thing to observe is the real-time bandwidth utilization on the WAN links. 
Under the Summary tab, you have information on all of the interfaces that are active for the organization. You can see that there are two WAN links, the Internet link, which is represented as ILL, and an MPLS circuit. We'll access a YouTube video and see what happens. As you can see, the moment the YouTube video starts, we have a bandwidth utilization graph that shows link usage details. You also have the option to look at the SD-WAN traffic steering policy-specific bandwidth utilization. To do this, click on Filter, select the Transport Options, then select the Remote Branch and SD-WAN Policy Rule Name. In this example, we'll analyze the rule called Stream. Click OK to apply the filter. The output shows the bandwidth utilization by traffic matching the stream rule. This is a useful option when you want to identify real-time traffic flows that match a policy rule. You can also click on the metrics link to review real-time health status of the paths and the SLA thresholds if they are configured. For example, the MPLS transport is not available for this application type. What this means is that the YouTube application can never use the MPLS transport for data streaming. Further down in the window, you can review any recent events. You have a high-level view of the health monitor and policy violation statistics. You can also review the top application by number of sessions, volume of traffic transmitted, or volume of traffic received. For example, if the monitored parameter is changed to the number of bytes received, the chart displays the applications based on received bytes. In this case, the most used application is iCloud, with over 8 gigabytes of traffic downloaded. Next, we'll look at the Services tab. The Services tab is where specific network services details can be monitored. To review all of the sessions active on the appliance, click on the Sessions tab in the Services section. The output gives details on the number of active sessions on the device. You can click on the session count to show more detailed output of the active sessions. This output shows session details like the source and destination IP addresses and the source and destination port and protocol numbers. It also displays the applications identified for each session, along with whether the session is SD-WAN or non-SD-WAN. For a more detailed output of a session, you can go to the Services tab and select the specific service. Let's take a look at the SD-WAN Sessions detail. Select the SD-WAN Services tab. A new set of sub-tabs is displayed for the different SD-WAN services. Click on the last tab, which is Sessions. This displays the total active SD-WAN sessions on the appliance. To create a detailed filter of the sessions, click on the I icon under the Session Count field. The filter form provides inputs to filter the sessions based on user-defined parameters. To view all active sessions, leave the fields empty and click on Filter. The output shows a lot more details than the previous output, with information on bytes dropped, SD-WAN rules, interface details, etc. Let's close this window and go back to the SD-WAN monitor view. Click on Policies. The Policy tab provides information on SD-WAN traffic steering policy rule hit counts, and the details of packet and traffic volume transmitted and received by each of the rules. Next, we'll click on the SLA path and select a remote location. This output shows the availability of the SD-WAN paths from the local site to the selected remote site. The connection state up indicates that the path is up and the SD-WAN policy engine can use the path to steer traffic towards the remote site. Click on the SLA metric tab, then select the destination branch. This window gives information about the health of the paths towards the destination branch. Information about latency, jitter, packet loss, and loss variations are displayed for each circuit or path. We'll cover next generation firewall, IPsec, and CGNAT features in other sessions on security services. Next, we'll proceed to the network monitoring options. You can view interface details by clicking on the Interfaces tab. 
The output shows all of the interfaces available on the appliance and statistics for those interfaces. To view routing table entries, click on Routes and select the Virtual Router and the IP Protocol from the drop-down menu. This displays the routing table entries for the selected routing table. To view BGP adjacencies, click on the BGP tab and select the Virtual Router. In this example, we're viewing the Parent Org Control VR. This displays the details of BGP sessions with the controllers. As you can see, both of the BGP adjacencies with the controllers are established and routes are being exchanged. You can view other networking parameters by selecting them from the networking menu. The systems window is where information on system health is displayed, which includes CPU and memory utilization and disk load. Software version details are also displayed. From the output on the screen, we can see that this Versa Flex VNF software instance is running as a virtual machine on a Kimu hypervisor. The software version is 16.1 R2S9, and there are four cores and eight gigabytes of memory assigned to this virtual machine. Further down, you can see the Versa services status, along with the template and device group details for this branch. At the bottom of the window, you can review the licensing details. The output here shows that the branch is subjugated to the director. That means that everything is functioning from a licensing point of view. The Tools tab is used to test reachability to WAN destinations or LAN hosts. To test reachability, click on the Ping tab and provide information about the destination IP or host name. Select which routing instance to use to source the packets, the source address, the packet size, and the packet count. Click Start to begin the test. The result is posted in the Results section. Tests can be performed on the WAN or LAN interfaces. You can use the traceroute utility to identify the path taken by packets to reach a destination. A similar process is used to initiate the traceroute function. You can capture packets on LAN or WAN interfaces with the TCP dump tool. To capture packets, select the interface, define your filter in the filter field, and select the timeout. The default timeout is one minute for a packet capture. Click on Start to start the packet capture and click on Stop to stop it at any time before the timeout. You can download the packet capture file to your local workstation with the Download button. You can then open it using Wireshark to analyze the packet capture. The Speed Test tool allows you to test link speeds. You have to configure Versa Flex VNF branches as speed servers before you can run this test. For advanced troubleshooting, you have shell access to the branch device by clicking on the shell button. Through the shell, you have access to the base operating system as well as the device CLI. At this point, we've seen the options and features that are available for branch monitoring from basic networking attributes to advanced networking services statistics. The information available is simple to understand and intuitive. There are various tools and outputs available to monitor the status of Layer 2 to Layer 7 services. Next we'll discuss device administration. There are two main categories of device administration. The first is the configuration administration which refers to how the device is expected to behave with respect to different services running on that particular Flex VNF. The second is software administration. This is used to manage the software packages running on the appliances, including version tracking and upgrades. Let's take a look at how Versa manages these two aspects of device administration. Director Administration tab Click on Appliances on the left menu. This is where you can see all the active or successfully onboarded appliances. First we'll discuss device administration and software upgrades. For each of the appliances successfully onboarded, the software version running on the appliance is displayed here. In the output, you can see that all of the branches, controllers, and hub devices are running software package 16.1 R2S9 while ILL and MPLS devices, which are service VNFs, are running 16.1 R1S1. Should you wish to upgrade these appliances, 
you need to follow an upgrade procedure. To perform an upgrade of a device, navigate to the Inventory section under the Administration tab. Under the Inventory section, select Image. The Image workspace is where you can upload software images that can then be installed on Versa devices. There are different versions of Versa Director and FlexVNF shown in the example. The package name is an administrator defined name. You can see here that it also shows the release date, the product type, and the date when the packages were uploaded. Once the software packages are uploaded to the Versa Director, return to the Appliances section. As an example, if you want to upgrade the MPLS device, check the box next to the appliance name, then select the Upgrade Selected Appliances from the top toolbar. A pop-up window prompts the user for the software package name to use for the upgrade. In our example, we're going to choose the software package named FlexVNF R2S9. The option to upload only allows the director to push the software file to the remote device without performing an immediate upgrade. This can be useful in the case where a rolling update across the network is planned and the software upload to remote devices is part of the staging process. In the example, we'll uncheck the Upload Only option and click OK. The progress of the Upload and Upgrade procedure can be monitored through the Tasks window. Once the upload is finished, Versa Director will automatically run the upgrade scripts to upgrade the appliance. In the example, the upgrade process is completed and after the device list is refreshed, the device now shows the new software version. This is how easy it is to upgrade the software on an appliance. The other part of device administration is configuration management and configuration operations. For example, for day-to-day -day operations, if you want to make changes to running configurations for troubleshooting or testing purposes, you can make those configuration changes through the appliance context. Let's modify the Shanghai branch configuration. From the appliances window, Select the branch you want to modify, in this case, Branch MT Shanghai. This takes you to the appliance specific context in Versa Director. From the Appliance Context window, there are multiple tabs. The tabs available for configuration are based on the licensing of the appliance. From the Networking tab, you can perform tasks such as enabling or disabling interfaces. By clicking on an interface, the Interface Configuration pop up window appears. Any changes performed through the configuration windows takes effect immediately on the device. Likewise, you can enable or disable WAN interfaces for testing. You can make changes in routing protocol configurations. To make changes to the routing protocols, click on Virtual Routers and select the routing instance for which you want to make changes, and then select the routing protocol you wish to modify. Similarly, other networking parameters and service policies can be modified through the individual device configuration context. Always remember that individual device configuration changes will be overwritten by device template configurations if the device template associated with the device is ever recommitted to the device. Modifying a device configuration directly can be useful for troubleshooting and testing, but should not be used for production configurations. This is the end of Session 10 of the Versa Essentials series.